Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. Look, let, let me explain okay. something. Ron DeSantis, you people don't understand this, but he, he, he is a president trapped in a governor's body, okay? He was born this way, and he's always felt like something's wrong. He's not supposed to be a governor. He's supposed to be president. Just, why can't we just let him transition? Huh? That's really his argument. It's and he funny. wants me to accept that? He wants me to accept that he's biologically a president? I don't think so. You also tweeted, when you think multi-million dollar corporation Disney is communist because you're a bigoted dope who doesn't know what words mean. Um. It seems like this, you know, war against Disney is backfiring, even with other Republicans with him, right? When I am reading Donald Trump's posts on Filth Social and saying, hell yeah, Ron DeSantis messed with the wrong company, Trump, you give it to him. Something's gone wrong for the boy who cried woke. Yeah. And and I mean, I thought Elon's rocket launch, uh, the SS DeSantis, was the perfect metaphor for all of this yesterday. Just amazing how... I'll admit, I, I will always admit when I'm wrong about stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I thought he was going to be George W. Bush, and he was just another Rick Perry. My God. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, well, you tweeted, uh, rapid unscheduled assembly of SpaceX happens. Uh, gradual scheduled assembly of blue check marks doesn't. Uh, happy 420. We were saying that's, that's, that can, then that then can then be Ron DeSantis' campaign, too, right? A rapid unscheduled assembly. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I'm glad we've all survived the blue check purge. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I never had oh. one anyway, so I'm devastated. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I, I feel like my privilege has been taken out surgically. I'll tell you. It's just <laughs> amazing. You know, how, yeah. Watching watching him ruin this website uh, so fast. But I mean, also uh, trying to give blue checks to celebrities that don't want them that are like, screw you. Right. I'm not paying. But that he's trying to give. Them. I mean, it's just what a mess. Well, now the blue check marks become a, a mark of shame, if mm -hmm. I may. Verified Twitter used to be where folks showed their identity. We yeah. knew who was who in that old space where people had to show their face, but now it's a place where trolls can hide anonymously verified. Spreading hate and lies and rumor, they'll pay eight bucks to call you groomer. Yeah. And that all John Fugel saying, well. Stephanie Miller Show Poet Laureate. Thank you. You Thank are you, my Maya Angelou. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we were saying earlier, our friend Alyssa Milano, I thought, raised a good point. It's, it, you know, for celebrities like her, she's like, okay, so people are allowed to impersonate me now and say whatever you want. You know, and she raised, can you sue Elon Musk for, I don't know, identity theft, fraud? You know, I mean, it, it, it raises oh, a lot yes. of interesting eagle, or legal issues, right? They began the verified blue check mark on Twitter way back in 2009 because celebrities were so upset about all the copycats and imitators. I mean, right. and I have to sh seriously, you can it even happens to me and I'm a mook. But like I have to I have to report people, who, you know, on Instagram and Twitter usually every week. And it's all just creepy guys DMing women. But they be created the blue check mark. So celebrities and journalists and heads of state could be uh, verified. Now, verified just means you're willing to give a billionaire eight bucks because you have yeah. a craven need for attention. And but it's, this it's, was it's, this was the tweet. So by revoking my blue check mark because I wouldn't pay some arbitrary free, uh, someone can just be me and say a bunch of bull blank. Uh, does that mean Twitter and Elon Musk are liable for defamation or identity theft or fraud? I mean, it's just it's worse than that. It's worse than that. Because like William Shatner, it was given one. Stephen King doesn't want one, and he was given one. And if you click on Stephen King's blue check mark, yeah. it will say this person is subscribed mm -hmm. to Twitter Blue and gave us their phone number. He has said he has not. Right. So what Elon Musk has done is, and it's really, really liability. He has given the illusion that these celebrities have have signed on to his right. product, that they are endorsing his product and using his product, and it's a lie. He, it's he's literally defaming them. And you will see lawsuits because of this. And it's just a little bit hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm just sitting back and watching. I think it's it's fantastic. He doesn't have William now. Shatner's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said, remember, if a politician is trying to raise the retirement age, they're trying to cut Social Security. Yeah, I'm a little sensitive to this now that I'm 41. Uh, sure, um, that's what yeah. you are. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is the same yeah. thing, isn't it? Same thing, and that's the Santas. He voted to raise the Medicare, the yeah. uh, Social Security age several times. That that is a cut. And again, thank God Donald Trump is doing something about it. I mean, it's amazing. I really, really thought that DeSantis had a shot at beating Joe Biden, but DeSantis can't beat Ron. I can't beat Donald Trump. So, 
Yeah. Um, honestly, and if Joe Biden's really worried about his age, uh, he he shouldn't be. He's already got the great strategy to just um, uh, replace his vice president. Uh, and the person he's going to run with should be Dianne Feinstein. I am telling you, with, with Feinstein as his running mate, Biden's going to look like Maxwell Frost, and he will coast to victory among Gen Z as one of their own. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> you retweeted, uh, Justice Clarence Thomas checked the box none for his wife's income during a period when Jenny Thomas earned more than $686,000 from the Heritage Foundation. When called on the lie, he said it was due to a misunderstanding of the filing instructions. And you said, be fair, people. How is Clarence Thomas supposed to know how the law works? Um <laughs> This is like I just this is the most blatant and I think easily understandable corruption that we've ever heard of, isn't it? Ever, ever. We we have gone to this country in like a couple short years from what the F fatigue to pandemic all the time to what I thought was going to be the great unclenching. And now, finally, we are in the golden age of micro accountability after Alex Jones and that lawsuit, after Donald Trump being indicted, after Fox and Dominion. I think we all get to be a little bit hopeful that maybe, just maybe, there'll be some kind of public accountability for this corruption. Now, Chris Van Holland is trying to tie the Congress's funding of the Supreme Court to the Supreme Court adopting a set of ethics rules they have to follow. I know the Republican Party will never let that happen. So whenever it seems like these guys are beyond reproach and we can't do anything about it, all you have to do is grab Clarence Thomas by the ankles and beat the rest of the GOP with him. Yeah, because that's it. There's no accountability. We, we well, can't. I, I was him. saying I was torn, you know, by this week by Marjorie Taylor Greene, just desecrating the body that my father proudly served in. It just uh, she's such a disgrace. And and yet at the same time, politically, I'm like, I guess this is good that this is she's out front as the face of the GOP now. Hang on a second. If if Kevin McCarthy put a rabid ferret on a congressional committee. Would you criticize the ferret or McCarthy? Because I think your anger is misdirected here. Yeah. She's just doing what a wild creature does. She's I feral. Think Eric Swalwell said just almost the same thing. Here Marjorie now. Taylor Greene uh, has the job of speaker. Kevin McCarthy has a title. That's why it's, it's, it's so uh, terrifying. And she got so worked up and, and you know, hurled uh, you know, that nonsense at me because I had pointed out uh, right before her uh, that they have now become the party that uh, doesn't back the blue, they back the coup. And I walked uh, Secretary Mayorkas through Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump's various statements about defunding uh, the police and defunding the FBI. And, and of course, that was her response. Uh, it was interesting, though, that she was ultimately muted uh, by her own chairman, who she would also go on uh, to attack later on that day as a rhino. It's complete chaos. He said, what is it like to be there? It's like you know, working every day in the land of misfit toys. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the fact is not just that she's a disgraced, you know, to the decorum of the body and all that. It's a lie. This lie has been debunked about Eric Swalwell over and over again uh, by the FBI. But they don't care. It, the lie mm. is candy for the bubble. And, and Marjorie Taylor Greene is like, if if the Newsmax comment section came to life and grew legs, <laughs> like like that's how depraved it is. I, I say we do nothing. These people, as bad as they are, this is disgusting to young people and to smart people and to decent people. Let them be the face of the party. Yeah. Let Marjorie Taylor Greene and Bobert and Clarence Thomas be the thing that drives voter turnout next year. CrossFit, I think these CrossFit get more Barney Rubble, Rubble legs. Which is, yes. Just, shall yeah. we Look, point uh, it? let yes. them get corrupt and let it help Democrats keep the Senate. Yeah. Um, he uh, Actually, Eric Smallwell talking about this very thing. They love to, to bro out and backslap uh, because they work in angertainment. I, I call it uh, a pro wrestling culture where uh, when the cameras are on, they give the fans what they think they want, which is to hit me and others over the head with a steel chair. Uh, I call these fans constituents. Uh, but when they're not on, you know, many of them will come up to me and, you know, one, one recently uh, invited me uh, to dinner. Uh, another, uh, Jim Jordan, by the way, in the gym, you'll you walk by him. Uh, in the gym every morning, he'll ask you, how was your weekend? How are you doing? It's just like, what's going on here with these folks? Like, this is serious stuff that we're doing. Uh, this is not just for the fans. Uh, and there are real consequences if the fans think that this is real and you actually don't even believe it. You know, he's echoing what uh, this congressman said. He's the Democrat, but he was talking about how, you know, people, the, the it's fake outrage. But I just, yeah. you know, I keep making the point, John, it's not both sides do it. 
it is it's not, not this. Sides, it's not both sides. Eric Swalwell. First of all, like I was saying, and you've the same. The Ted Lewis and Eric Swalwells and Adam Schiff's. We've done sexy liberal with them. I've spent a lot of time with them. They've been to my home. They are the same. They're the same off. Are fighting they, for working they, people. They, they right. are fighting for but they're policy. But they're the same off healthcare. camera as they are on camera. That it, it's not uh, the same. Uh, you know, Adam Schiff. Like I remember, remember his staff. Uh, Travis, the, our, our friends are on his staff. They said the same thing. He's like he's the same. All the time, yeah. whether he's in a congressional hearing, he is just what you see. He's calm and reasoned and intelligent. Jamie, yeah. Jamie Raskin, I mean, Jamie Raskin yeah. the same way. You know, so many, I mean, Greg Meeks, you hang out with these guys like off the air. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I mean, uh, uh, Barbara Lee, I mean, you meet these people and then, yeah, they're, they're the same public servants. They have different personas on camera, different styles of talking, but they're not complete two faces who wear a pro wrestling yeah. mask. I yeah. mean, you're right. It's just like pro wrestling, except cable news of the steroids. Yeah, I think because we both loved him, we can out Gilbert Gottfried that he did not talk like that off air. He Gilbert Gottfried was a fraud. <laughs> he was a fraud. And I'll say it on his grave. <laughs> Complete two faced, totally different guy off camera. <laughs> one last I one. I brought him over to my house. I wanted him to like scream the C word at my child. He wouldn't do it. He was a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> one last one, Eric Swalwell. It's actually interesting that Kevin McCarthy wants to put in place, you know, work requirements, uh, you know, for cancer patients who are on food stamps. Uh, if Kevin McCarthy or Marjorie Taylor Greene had to pass a work requirement, they wouldn't get paid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. J Jesus, that's what Jesus would do, right? right? Yeah. Work requirements oh, yeah. for cancer patients on food stamps. Jesus fed everyone after a drug test to make sure they deserved food. Absolutely. <laughs> That's funny. Um, John, did I mention to you that we I've gotten several bookings on air for uh, the Chicago Sexy Liberal that we don't have a date or a theater for yet, but we're doing oh, but we're allowed Chica to say this Chicago now, Sexy Liberal mentioned. for the DNC. We will be there. Sexy Liberals will be there assembled. Wow. Yeah. So it's like a half announcement. We we're coming into the light. This is great. We are. We're revving up the Sexy we Liberal just, engine. We just you don't guys have, have details. No idea. Announcements to come. 50 dates next year, one That's... for every state in the union. We are going to all 50 states. John Fugel saying is a complete and, and total and liar. And that's why God made him and so How are Dean's planning it? Guam. <laughs> we're going to go to Guam. <laughs> yes, we're going to Guam. We're bringing statehood to the Virgin Islands. We're it's, going. It's the future there, you know. You can get, you know what? You can get a sexy liberal preview. John Fugel saying we'll be doing a one hour set for uh, Carl Frisch. That's right. When yeah. is that and where is that? Oh, I heard. That's uh, that's in Tyson, Virginia. That's a week from tomorrow on the yes. 29th. Um, you can go to Carl's page and get all the information and come on down. Uh, he's running for re-election on the school board yep. up against a, a, a lot of, you know, MAGA reprobates. So come on down. It's going to be a big, big party. And yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be taking Christian nationalism. I, I was talking to Carl this week and I'm like, so I can make jokes about abortion, right? It's your election. I don't want to ruin it all for you. He's like, "Oh, make abortion jokes." Okay. So we're we're gonna we're gonna do something unholy for the public schools. Oh, <laughs> Hooray! Boy.